Copper America is brought to you on Eurosport by Nike. A very warm welcome to all our viewers throughout Europe and Asia, all of whom will now be watching live the clash of the South American footballing titans, Argentina, the present holders of the Copa America, and Brazil. These two great nations have bet 75 times over the years, and whilst the overall record is about level, 31 wins to Argentina and 27 to Brazil, with the rest drawn, it's in the South American Championship, the Copa America, that Argentina has exerted its superiority, winning 13 times to Brazil's comparatively meager six. Indeed, despite the reputation which Brazil has rightly accrued over the years, they've been an appalling record in this championship. They've only won it four times and never outside their own country, whilst Argentina topped the table with 14 titles. Now, if you'd watched Brazil in their first game when even the organizers confused everybody by issuing the wrong squad numbers, you would have imagined nothing other than a, a bunch of actors masquerading as Brazilians had turned up to play the game. But then, under great pressure, beaten by Chile 3-2, they responded to the criticism and came back to something like their tradition against Paraguay, with Palinha, the top scorer in the Copa Libertadores, scoring a couple of goals which Zico himself would have been proud of. Out come the teams into the sweltering atmosphere, a stadium that isn't filled tonight but will be for the final itself on Sunday, which you can see live on Eurosport. Argentina themselves started off very tentatively, and that uh, is saying the least. They played against uh, Mexico in a game which I felt uh, Mexico really ought to have won. First of all, they had played Bolivia, and, and Batistuta got a goal in a breakaway when they never looked like scoring in the entire game. And then they played very meekly against Mexico, who played some outstanding football against them. But they got that draw, and then a marvellous game against Colombia, marred by sendings off, which will affect Argentina tonight. But at the end of the day, this Argentina side can point to the fact they're unbeaten since their last World Cup final. There are the Brazilians. And I think they may have been refreshed by the act of coming away down from altitude and the places there where are uh, down to near sea level. The Brazilians in particular have been complaining about the altitude and how it affects their players more than anybody else. That is the great uh, Argentinian captain, Oscar Ruggeri, plays his football in Mexico, so he'll know something about altitude. And there are the inevitable Argentinian supporters. They go all over the world to support a team that uh, I would imagine must still be considered one of the favorites for the next World Cup in the United States of America. They're still to qualify for that, of course, but I'm quite sure they'll do exactly that. They're playing in a section with uh, Colombia. And Colombia, of course, is a team that got through that marvelous game at penalties. And they look as if against Ar uh, Uruguay, and uh, they look as if they'll be waiting for Argentina to perhaps put one over on them before they play in the World Cup itself. The other two in the group will be Paraguay and Peru. The referee coming out there, leading his officials, Mr. Albert Tejada of Peru. The Peruvians, in fact, are a bit sensitive about referees. They had one of the referees changed before their last game against Chile, so there's a bit of politicking going on here. And that, in a sense, has affected Argentina because with the sending off of Fernando Redondo after that game with Colombia they applied for the restitution of one of the players into the squad and they got him a player from Vélez Sarsfield the champions of Argentina Jose Basualdo and he comes into the side and will virtually fit into that uh, Redondo spot so there are two Basualdos on the field today for Argentina there are the two coaches together, Alberto Pereira and Mario Zagallo, his assistant. I was about to say the Socrates of Brazilian football, except that you might get a little bit confused with the player, but he's certainly a very wise man and been taking a lot of press conferences and handing out advice on how Brazil, with a side minus, of course, many of the great players, Bebeto, Ricardo, Valdo, Careca, Romario, Dungo, Rai, and so on, 
and many people consider this of course to be maybe even a B or a C team but they still carry these famous jerseys their reputation is still at stake so Argentina about to start So down go the officials to have a look at the Nets. The stadium, sadly, a little bit uh, empty at the moment. I think the locals are, are saving up for this special occasion, which they think will come their way when Ecuador get to the final themselves. They have the easier route. They play all the games at Quito and, of course, um, await the winners of the next semi uh, quarterfinal. So the referee, I expect... Um, if this game is played in a sporting fashion, will not have his work cut out at all. The Brazilian coach is under a bit of pressure. The president of the Brazilian FA, Ricardo Teixeira, flew into Cuenca before their previous game, wondering why some of the European-based Brazilian players hadn't been included when they had made it perfectly plain. They wanted to play in this tournament. So there is pressure, there always is, and I feel rather sorry for Carlos Alberto Pereira and also Alfio Basile, the Argent Argentinian coach, because both these nations suffer a great drain of talent, and it is very difficult to get teams together. So it is something of a miracle that Argentina have won the Intercontinental Cup over in Arabia and then took on, Den that was in October, then took on Denmark, won in penalties against them and are still unbeaten since that World Cup final I would put them as favourites to win this because I just got the impression they were beginning to come on to a game they're, they're, they're always professional you never see a really awful Argentinian side but I think the coach was also agreeing that in the second game they began to play the ball about a bit more confidently and that very necessary acclimatisation I think They've now passed about 75% off. Roberto Carlos, there's only one change in the Brazilian squad, and that is the Cesar Sampaio is off, and into the team comes number 17, Lucinho. I'll very quickly go through the numbers for you. The youngster, Zetti, is in goal, replacing Tafarel, as he did for the last game. Number two is Cafu, having a superb tournament. Argentina on the break. Number three, Antonio Carlos. Four, Valbert. Six, Roberto Carlos. Seven, Edmundo. Eight, Boidiero. Nine, Muller. Ten, Palinha coming on to magnificent scoring form. Eleven, Azinho. And 17, Luzinho. That's the Brazilians. And both of these sides realizing if they didn't before last night. Then after 90 minutes, if it's equal, it goes to extra, it goes to a penalty kicks as a great start. Oh, just passed. I think uh, they're appealing for offside all the same. Let me repeat, this game will go to penalties. Lovely ball through there. And yes, it was Polina who was in that offside position. The Argentinians very quickly go Kachia and go. Number three is Altamirano. It was a bit doubtful whether he would play. He took an all, but he's all right. Now there are two Basualdos. Number four, Fabian Basualdo. Number six, the captain, Ruggeri. Number seven, Medina. The other Basualdo, number eight, Jose Basualdo from Vélez Sarsfield. Number nine, Batistuta, who was the highest goal scorer two years ago in the Copa America. Number 10, Simeone, who scored that incredible goal in the previous game against Colombia. Number 11 is Nestor Gorosito. Number 15, Borelli. And number 17, Zapata. Redondo, of course, suspended in that flare-up in the Colombian match. With uh, Rincon, I thought they were very unfortunate. Trying to get between these two defenders, Antonio Carlos, one of the most elegant, but still, nevertheless, 
toughest of uh, track tacklers. Well, you wouldn't say the stadium is uh, vibrating with noise at the moment, but there's a kind of hum of expectancy about it. And I don't think these two great uh, sides will need any huge crowds behind them for motivation. The very first international that Brazil ever played was against Argentina in 1914 where they lost 3-0 and the great rivalry has carried on ever since then. Played across by Zapata playing right in the middle of that defence. This is Fabian Boswaldo. Rather a slag ball. Picked up by Cafu. Watch his attacking of the match. A wonderful runner. Doesn't finish quite so well, but he does have penetration. Antonio Carlos. Just cut off there by Altimarano. Good break here by Medina. He's got a little bit of space inside him. Gorosito trying to get it back to Medina. This is Zapata. And too many yellow jerseys there. Well, I'm not quite sure who the locals are favoring. Argentinians are not all that popular because in a Copa Libertadores game, River Plate came here and got involved in some nasty play and that left a bad taste in the mouths of the Ecuadorians. So it may well be the Brazilian, uh, who are always favored no matter where they go anyway, will get the bulk of the crowd. which, by the way, is only a fraction of what it should be. And now opened up by Borghiero. Cafu. Picked up by Edmundo. Brazil have shown they are particularly strong on the right. Cafu simply wants to come forward all the time, and if it's not he, it's Edmundo. They played uh, Cafu, Antonio Carlos, Valbert and Roberto Carlos right across the back. Free kick though and Cafu about to take this. Headed high in the air there by Zinho who came in. And it is a pity for the Argentinians that they've had to alter their defence. The only remaining one from the first game is Goy Cachia. Vasquez uh, took a, an injury. Franco, of course, had that uh, rather tragic leg break. And Redondo suspended. Uh, he does that so well, Antonio Carlos. But nevertheless, there's another side to him, as players will find out if they try to mess about with him. Very hard in the tackle indeed. That's a better move forward on him. Get three up. Out to the outside is Valder. Little bit too high. Nide Mundo. Left to Polinho. Polinho wants it back again. Well, that's in, no. Lovely little ball forward. And Muller right on the end of it, but scooping it up. Polinia doing a lot of the work. I think he wanted that ball back himself. And it may have been more productive if he had left it on to Polinia. Yeah, we're hearing the Brazilian chants in the background now. I don't think there are all that many from Brazil itself. They have the local sympathy. To start by Valberto Roberto Carlos. Uh, 
Salber. A lot of very loose play in midfield at the moment. Cafu. Cafu wants to go forward again. Well, they're playing the ball about attractively. Very much as we saw Colombia do last night. A brilliant run here by Edmundo. Well, you could see the way Edmundo took on that defense. I, I do believe the Argentinian defenders thought he was going to lay it off for a 1-2 and then went for it himself. Edmundo from Palmeiras. One of the younger players, he's only 22 and there for great encouragement. Well, uh, Alfio Vasily not at all happy with the way he got a little bit of latitude on the edge of the box. Ooh, a very obvious ball there by Simone. Free kick. I make it to about uh, nine minutes gone, still no scoring. Well, we saw Uruguay do this last night against Colombia. They let the Colombians come at them all the time, wave after wave, battering against a very good defensive wall. And the Uruguayans almost got away with it. I think Argentina are a somewhat superior team to the Uruguayans, all the same. I think there'll be more aggression from them. That's uh, pushed forward by Gorosito. And now the youngster Zetti and Go. And all of the players from Sao Paulo. Hardly anybody from the Rio area in this uh, team any longer. Ruggeri had watched that very carefully, but notice how Brazil are giving very good support. This is Edmundo. Cafu, they're looking very alert indeed, the Brazilians. That's a lucky break for Argentina. And again, Batistuta going on his own. Whipped away by Antonio Carlos, and then Valver came in at the back. And I think Valver annoyed that was slackness in the Brazilian defense. Little bit of wrestling going on and the free kick given against Lucinho. Lucinho from the Vasco da Gama club. Very safe goalkeeper, uh, agile as you might imagine, but what I did admire about him was he had a very safe pair of hands indeed. Didn't drop anything, went for th things rather bravely. And up has come Ruggeri. I think they're telling him to push back a little bit. Gorosito with it, Baris Tuta. Well, what did I say? Any mistakes there, and that was going to bounce out again. Well, the play of the Brazilians in the first game we did against Peru would have brought tears to your eyes. It just, uh, it was as, as if they had just flown into the city, jet-lagged and nothing much to offer. That was Banish Tuta. No complaints from the Brazilians about that. And I think that's a very good sign. It might be a little different near the end of the game, all the same, where decorum goes a little bit awry. It's cat and mouse stuff at the moment. Valbert. Muller came back deep. Almost got the one-two, follows up again. Good tackling in the heart of the defense, though. 
and out it goes Borelli really came in very hard there Giorgi Borelli again very experienced from the racing club Zapata wanted that back doesn't get it now Brazil on the break he just seemed to have a, a better mood about them. In goes Willock, can he get the shot? And nobody beside him, whoa! Well, I think uh, Goy Kachia, very fortunate. It was whipped out of his hands, but fortunate in the sense that the Brazilians had only that one man up. I think Muller himself was a little surprised nobody was inside him. Simeone. Trying to get it down to Batistuta. And Zapato in with it. Neatly headed away by Antonio Carlos. And now the break. Notice how deep Muller is coming to pick this up. He's a much more effective player when the ball is put ahead of him. Much more European than he is Brazilian in my view. Now Cafu. Backed up by Edmundo, as I said. Good little duo they have. Edmundo, beautiful ball! How did Polina miss? There he is again, can he make amends? Oh, he gets himself in a knot. That's what you call the corkscrew move. Tremendous let off for Argentina, but so typical. Coming right back, Valdez there. But he's two turn, goes forward. And in the space of 60 seconds, the Bears flowing move and counter-attack we've had. And the game is 15 minutes old. I don't think that was really deceiving Zetti all the same. Brilliant run by Edmundo. There he is again. He's no good in show, but uh, he certainly knows how to take on defenders. Tough to dispossess and has the skill to back it up. Zapata. Got the way across by Nesto Gorosito. Let me repeat, we're playing in this uh, monumental stadium, which is a Guayaquil, which offers no great altitude problem at all to the players. Both camps have obviously been complaining about that bitterly. Put in there by Altimirano. Followed by Medina, high one. And they're all in his own Zeti. I wonder if this is the end of Caparel. Not the total end, he would obviously go to the States, an experienced man. But they probably want to try something else, Ruggeri coming forward in the break. Matty Stutter got it, I think there's going to be a booking for that. There is Antonio Carlos. Now then, Antonio Carlos has already been booked. Two bookings and that means if they get through this, he'll miss the semi-final. Now that may turn out to be a bit of blow for the Brazilians because, believe you me, Antonio Carlos is the binding force of this Brazilian defense. It's not just a matter of his good vision. He lays the ball off well. He has that kind of easy, aristocratic bearing of a Beckenbauer. Not as good as that, but... And he gets, uh, he gets rid of the ball well and crunches into the tackle. Not a bad player in short. So if they get through, he misses the semi-final. Gorosito.
Picked up there or almost by Borelli. Much, much more lively Brazilian side. They're getting the open spaces better. Muller on the run. There was nothing of that in their very first game. It, it began to come when they were playing against Chile, although they were at the receiving end eventually, I think unluckily. Well, the Argentina midfield not as productive at the moment as uh, Brazil. But Edmundo and the likes of Boydiera doing marvellous work. Boydiera coming forward. Run here, Capu, and that is where he is distinctly weak. He gets into marvellous positions forward, runs very well, but his final ball never matches it. By the law of averages, he's going to uh, complete that and get a 100% run, and somebody is going to suffer. It hasn't come yet. Well, Barry Stuta gave that away, I think, expecting something of a run that would normally come from a team playing in a more refreshing part of the season. But remember, all of these players have had a long, hard season, especially the European ones, and about to embark on the World Cup qualifiers. And a little thing like the Copa America to play for. Cafu again. Look at the running of the man, and I think he'll back. He's still there, though. There's a great chance. Where's Muller? Trying to drive it in. Great save by Gokicia. But where was the Brazilian hitman? Why just out there now? Zinho. Come over to this wing, Cafu. Almost brought down and the Argentinian defence looking slightly fragile at this stage. We played 20 minutes, still no scoring. Good defending though at uh, that particular spot, but then they looked a little bit fragile after that. As the ball came across, slightly panicked. Now the break by Borelli. There's Baristuta, leaves it. And following up there was uh, Jose Basualdo. The man who was brought into the squad by the kind permission of the South American Football Association the tournament organizers when you look back over this uh, Argentinian team and you see the team that they had the previous competitions when they won it so many changes have taken place but still nevertheless seven in the squad were part of that championship winning team two seasons ago Batty Stutter most notably whereas the Brazilians are well they've gone through a complete laundering process beautiful little run forward there by Lucinho Capu goes still has it can he lay it off Capu oh brilliant effort oh no wonder he's thumping the turf I did say about this man, somebody would suffer. They almost did. He's quite outstanding the way he gets forward. It was bad luck there all the same. Hit it away there by Gorosita back in defence. The Brazilians desperately unlucky. Oh look at the space, they're getting all the same. Muller waiting at the back post it didn't arrive now their breakaway which is what they're relying mainly on now
while Batis Tuta looks back over his shoulder towards the referee he's not getting away with that though I think the referee's had a tolerably good game the refereeing in the tournament hasn't been all that bad by the way but uh, one or two real Lulus in, in it but uh, this referee seems to know what he's doing Willard again back deep Cafu might turn out to be the outstanding player in the tournament oops I think he's got it on the throat now then that could be dangerous oh dear now they have to get the physio on very quickly indeed he seemed to get that right on the larynx well I'm not sure that squirting water on will help they don't want to drown the man as well you wouldn't call this particularly sophisticated treatment would you I mean they've got all sorts of things now and I wonder if uh, somebody forgot the medical cabinet on the Brazilian side anyway they don't want to lose this man Cafu I was just about to say he might turn out to be one uh, of the candidates for the player of the tournament and he got that an elbow quite accidentally in my view and for just a moment it looked as if they were extremely worried about him I don't think you want to see this too often but doesn't he have beautiful balance the way he he drifts both past and into players I think he'll be all right yes this is uh, one for the future he's only 23 years of age I think I mentioned before that Real Madrid are very interested in him if they're not halfway over the Atlantic with a very healthy checkbook I'll be very surprised this program as I said is being beamed out live uh, throughout Europe and Asia and all the European men who matter in football will be watching it some of them of course are across here the Italians Saki is across Fabio Capello is across and if you want uh, to put on a bet um, both the Italians really do fancy Colombia say they might even take on Ecuador who are looking very strong playing at home that was Simeone down and I think a yellow card this time to Boidero looks to me like uh, Boidero got that for that challenge the teams have got to watch these yellow cards now. I think it's uh, indeed it was by Diero. I think Simone is going to be all right. Referees a little. Ah, now here come the Keystone Cops. I mean, if anybody sneezes on the pitch, on come the ambulance men. I'd be scared of holding my side at all or else I'd find myself on a stretcher they have been on and off the pitch but uh, Simeone isn't too happy is he off he goes well we've gone 27 minutes and Brazil ought to be in the lead through that man Cafu long ball there by Alte Mirano as I said uh, he was very doubtful for this game seems to have picked up all right pity about Simeone I think they'll try very hard to get him back into the fray he scored one of the most remarkable goals 
I've seen in a top competition that goal against Colombia when it should have been a penalty kick he was brought down in the box but I think if he had uh, never had experience of European football he might have done the traditional Argentinian rolling in the dust as if he had been mugged but uh, he chose to play on and score the goal from an acute angle and I think his experience in Pisa and Seville has given him that little bit of stability that way at the back is Valbert from Sao Paulo I did point out the predominance of Sao Paulo players and uh, players from clubs in that area no less than six of them in the squad Edmundo still remaining very tricky I think he laid it off just a little too quickly Batistuta came back only scored one goal in the tournament as opposed to five last time out but a long way to go and I think he's suffering from starvation to be honest the service to him has been rather poor throughout this tournament he's a very exciting player but we've never seen him in full flow the ball just ahead of him striding towards goal looking for little one-twos and the coach indeed uh, Alfeo Basili has been stressing that he wants the Argentinians to be secure in defence but move forward quickly with one-touch football he made that point very precisely at a press conference we're right on the half hour that's the scoreline a little bit of an injustice to Brazil have done most of the attacking and I wondered if Cafu having taken that knock is just going to rest himself just a little I don't think he'll be singing too loudly after this regardless of the result but oh what a difference in this Brazilian team to the one we saw at the start make Jekyll and Hyde seem like a quick change act because the transformation has been enormous slow it uh, happened during even the defeat by Chile you could see them getting better and better coming forward uh, to take that Roberto Carlos I think the Brazilian players very anxious about the way Argentina can break and in depth and very quickly indeed. Very hot day and the Argentinians complaining in particular about the heat. they're playing this kind of football I think to drag Argentina forward a little or Muller using his pace to effect just lacks the final skill to go with that I said he's mostly a kind of out of the European mold Cafu now has he recovered maybe not and look how deep Batistuta is that's not where he should be a much more studied game in the last 10 minutes get the impression they're trying now to outfox each other Simeone he's recovered all right Simeone in a lot of good defending that was uh, Roberto Carlos into that 
Well, Polina appealing to the referee. Just turns away from that. That's a good one, Benny Stutek with forward. No, it was uh, it was Simeone who came up. Diego Simeone. Very good friend, by the way, of the other Diego Maradona. Both of whom played for Seville. One still does, Simeone. Although Maradona, I doubt very much we'll see any more international football. And most notably, a, a much quieter period by the likes of uh, Cafu recovering from that quite bad knock. And even more significantly from Edmundo and Palinha. Ball not being knocked through to them. And the game has centered on midfield now. Try to wear each other down. Zapata. Neat little touch. They're looking dangerous. Now that must have been a very difficult shot indeed. It was very close to Medina's feet. He really didn't have much leverage. Two defenders right in front of him. But he did get the shot in eventually. And that shows you how dangerous they can be. They've been doing hardly anything ooh, in the last, well, we've played 35 minutes and they've had maybe a couple of chances of any note getting into the penalty area. But out of nothing, that shot. Perhaps not such a, a stark contrast as that between Uruguay and Colombia, but it's something of the same nature. A team very professionally organized, much more defense orientated against a much more freewheeling team with more skilled players going forward. But at the moment, the Argentinians giving the impression that defense is very well balanced and solid and added to that they've had slices of luck oh superb there Valbert came forward Valbert wants the ball back he's inside and a bad bad ball there that again was Muller and the lack of finesse about Muller must I think disturb the coach that's better Edmundo Muller, who's up for the dummy, it's Cafu. Preparing for that, that was rather look one brilliant play by Muller there. Well now, if a man has been made to eat his words, it's me on that instance. Having mentioned his lack of skill in midfield, that is where he is best at, in the box like that. And that almost paid off. So often you see Muller in midfield doing something very cumbersome. And then suddenly inside the area he comes alive. And that's where it really matters for him. Offside. I now make it by my watch about uh, ooh, eight minutes to go to have time and that is a very unhealthy dugout in there clouds of nervous smoke billowing about the place you may remember the great uh, Argentinian Minotti he never had a cigarette out of his mouth at all Even when he was elated, there was still one dangling from the lips. In fact, I don't think I ever saw Manetti smile ever. Once he did under a local anaesthetic. Antonio Carlos. Edmondo. Great play and the big sweeper has come forward now. Can he get past his man? Muller on the box. Muller, can he get the shot? And he does! Oh, brilliant!
The man who becomes electric inside the penalty area. It's where he should live permanently. Outside the box, not so clever. But where it matters, that dynamic penetration. Watch this again, a little shuffle, a wriggle, and then the explosion. 38 minutes gone and a glorious strike justifying the superiority of Brazil in midfield and that was of the narrowest margin, margin between goalkeeper and post watch it again now Argentina must come forward this now really makes a game of it well let me go back again to that uh, man Muller who's had experience of course of a couple of World Cups 86, 90 I watched him in Italy not at all impressed by him he did score a goal in the Torino Stadium the Stadia dell'Alpi against uh, uh, Scotland which effectively eliminated Scotland had another goal but like the entire Brazilian team seem to be clogged uh, or the whole spirit of the scene seem to be clogged up by the idea of becoming European well he most certainly is in his bustling style he lacks to my mind the outfield skill of some of the great uh, Brazilian players like Didi and of course uh, Pele but by Jove in the penalty area I don't think uh, when he's on this kind of form you can get better Now with Sao Paulo, the South American Libertadores champions. So we'll be seeing Muller playing against Marseille. Unless something happens to Marseille as a result of the uh, bribery scandal for the World Club Championship. Now Muller has sco scored two very explosive goals in this tournament. One of the goals against Chile. Free kick. Look for Batistuta way by Antonio Carlos free kick I wonder how seriously injured he is now this is the goal again a brilliant move forward by the way I've been extolling the virtues of that shot and finish but the man who really carved them up was Antonio Carlos the big central defender which rather emphasizes the point I made about how much they'll miss him because he won't play in the semi-final he's had two yellow cards and there is another one being flourished against Argentina this time in my view I think uh, referees are a little bit too liberal with the yellow cards sprinkling them about like confetti free kick by Antonio Carlos Altimirano it's confirmed gets that booking Argentina must come forward now you begin to wonder if they have the right zest to do so Ruggeri open it up well Simeone not much in this game Ruggeri came up shaping for the shot brilliantly cleared by Balba and I think he took a knock on the knee at the same time the Brazilians don't want to stop though 
Now Cafu. Yes, that'll be a free kick. Barely heard that whistle. And I make it a couple of minutes to have time. Argentina rather stunned by that goal. When Argentina won the trophy last season, and uh, which they did in, in style, uh, it was in fact a, a great occasion for them because they hadn't done it for a long time. They had won it for the first time in 32 years. A little push on Muller. And at this stage, they might well be relinquishing their title. I think Cafu has wisely kept himself to his own half just to make sure that he's physically all right. Well, the challenge is to Argentina, Brazil, just a little bit more cautious now. Notice how Edmundo didn't dig in very hard for that. They've had the mobility in midfield, and these touches of creativity added to the explosion. Oh, Cafu almost brought down again in exactly similar circumstances. There we are, we're into stoppage time. Batistuta came in, that's a very useful ball. And suddenly there was a gap in the Brazilian defence. And Cafu wisely getting out of the way of that. He's already had two bitter experiences of being run straight into. And there goes the halftime whistle, in fact. The referee, Mr. Alberto Tejada from Peru, brings it to an end. And I think that's justice, isn't it? Well, have you been as he now does? We start the second half. And Argentina, who have by far the superior record against Brazil in this competition, 13 times to Brazil's six wins, are now looking defeat in the face because they did nothing in that first half to make any impression on that Brazilian defense Batistuta straight there to that young goalkeeper who really hasn't been put under any strain Viola Ezzetti that's a free kick Gorosita going in heavily. Roberto Carlos. That surely is a free kick, yes. Muller being tampered with, you might say, by Borelli. Well, I think there might be a booking here as well. Well, I didn't see the yellow card being flourished, but uh, at least I didn't notice. Well, well, he did get it. Well, uh, it's not as if the Argentinians have come out to kick this team off the park. You might get that impression early on. Uh, just one of these things. That was an awkward tackle there as well by Medina.
Ramon Medina Bello is his second name River Plate he comes from wild wild shot there by Roberto Carlos Roberto Carlos from Palmeiras well think of these other names to conjure with Bebeto, Ricardo, Valdu, Careca, Romario just to name a few they could have been playing here but I in a sense it doesn't really matter for the coach in terms of the coherence of the side because he's still got to bring them from the four corners of the world as it were good run by Cafu again good understanding doesn't he change direction well here he is again oh, look to be slightly fouled and wins a corner surely oops no the ref uh, linesman right on the spot to be fair to him a lot of warming up going on by the Argentinians at the moment chased across there by Medina I doubt very much of the, they'll change your tactics radically. Batistuta, well, he may have dived. Uh, Simone, rather, brought down there. Batistuta just behind him. But there is always the potential for the unexpected from any Argentinian football side. We'll certainly not write them off so far. Nicely weighted, still tempting, Antonio Carlos got his head to it, up goes Zapata, weakly though, you just get the impression that Brazilians have a greater appetite for this game now, Mula, head down, charging, oh just a little bit too far again, that's what I meant about him, you know, when he, he goes in midfield, he, he does make these little basic errors, misjudgment of uh, knocking the ball about. But inside the box, when he gets twisting and weaving, is deadly. Well, Boris, you know, put it back well, but suddenly that Brazilian defence opened up. And didn't the goalkeeper remain admirably calm? Zinho back he goes to Roberto Carlos out comes Zetti nice touch by Muller is it onside? no Polina by about a couple of yards nice little touch by Muller Polina has been hovering in the back of a lot of moves towards the penalty area but uh, Quite clearly, the Copa Libertadores success he's had has made him a wanted man. He's being marred very closely. Back he goes. Looked as if he was finally good run by Simone. There's Baris Tuta in. And the most penetrating run Simone's had in the match. And he's giving more support to Baris Tuta, who came in at the back there, a little bit unfortunate. You certainly cannot write this man Badis Tuto off. Can make goals out of nothing. So, Brazil beware. Badis Tuta scored in the last occasion between the two teams. In the Copa. Really is astonishing that Brazil have not won this trophy outside their own country. One of the difficulties they have of uniting uh, players is not just the players who go across, it's the number of regions they have in that, that vast country. 27 districts all vying with each other for their own cup competitions and leagues. 
So what chance has a national coach who's very much in favour of a national league? Look for the one-two. Well tied up in the middle of that defence. Simone wants to come forward. There he is. Batituta goes on the left. Oh no. Nice little hit and run by Batistuta. Batistuta puts it back, gets it in. Zapata taking up position here, Basualdo. And across came Medina. Gets the corner kick out of that of Valber. Fabian uh, Basualdo and Giorgi uh, Basualdo both on the field now. And up comes Nesto Gorosito to take this from Boca. Shouts of encouragement from the bench. Right across, sir. Oh dear. The goalkeeper didn't need to move. That was a the point there. Now Simone will have to angle them away because this goalkeeper looks very safe and solid. Six feet two, good pair of shoulders on him, but the most important thing, hands that stick. Well, quite clearly Argentina beginning to get players forward in, in greater numbers. Picked up though by Zinho. Zinho to Palinha to Mula. Mula now to Edmundo. To Edmundo. Great plays. Very good at that. Can't get the shot in. Maybe a little one-two would have been more effective. And we're getting the substitution now. Jose Basualdo goes off. And onto the field comes Leo Rodriguez, who was part of the squad that won the Copa a couple of years ago. Plays with Atlanta. We've already seen him on in games. And Rodriguez picking it up now will attack on the right mostly. Here we have Medina. Oh, he waited that very well indeed. Bit unfortunate. Well, Antonio Carlos uh, came in, but so did Valbert. Gets the one two. They're breaking beautifully. Capu goes. So does Polinia. Capu on the run. While well, it was shoving by both players there, but that's a goal kick. And I think Cafu wants a little rest more than anything else. Not been a, a prolific tournament for goal scoring. The record for goal scored in this tournament belongs to Jair Pinto from Brazil, not surprisingly, with nine goals for the total tournament. He got that in 1949. Even Pelly couldn't better that. Run forward here by Zinho. But I think Pelly could have better that one. Especially on that foot. As I said, Pelly got a maximum of eight goals in this tournament. In 1959. I don't think anybody is going to exceed it in this one Polinia Cafu uh, out on the outside uh, ooh well underneath that well it was uh, quite clear from the first game that even though the Brazilians have been one of these uh, teams 
under trial in every game, under examination in every game. And even though they could claim they weren't at full strength, they were going to be criticised. And sure enough, it came. But the resemblance between that team and this one is purely coincidental. Much better performance, solid performance in all ways. Medina gets it forward to Rodriguez. That is Tuta. Might just have been given a little nudge there. It's not as if the players have sent him to Coventry, although he might well imagine that. Service has really been appalling, and I think largely because Argentina in midfield have been having their more effective players lie just a bit too deep. They've lost contact with Batistuta up front. I doubt very much of the Brazilians are playing a game of containment. But let's just say they're pacing themselves as Cafu picks up again, this time with a shot! Whoa. He really whistled that one in. Now this will tell us how close it was. Now I think the goalkeeper, Doi Kachia, had it well enough covered. But it came unexpectedly. He hit it so close to his body. And at the moment, Argentina are going out of this tournament and it hasn't maybe yet fully and forcibly sunk in. Away breaks. Borelli coming forward and oh no. Fighting hard for the ball and all having his jersey pulled back. Now drifting forward Zinho. Easy ball to Polina. Polina, little wriggle. Wants a bit of support and nobody was going to make the run. Goyke Chia anxious to get on with it. Goyke Chia is not been affected yet by that uh, libero epidemic that goalkeepers are suffering whereby they feel as if they really ought to get out of the penalty area as often as they can. Certainly happening more and more in this tournament. You'll see the Mexican goalkeeper later doing exactly that sort of thing. The Colombian goalkeeper Cordoba is not averse to it. 15 minutes gone. And that surely free kick. Yes, it's uh, Rodriguez brought down. Now this could be very interesting indeed. Another substitution coming up. This time it's Acosta coming on. On will come Acosta. Acosta from Boca Juniors and what's uh, going on here the referee trying to get this uh, Batistuta by the way is being signaled off the field and he's playing hide and seek with the bench well now what's he doing here he's reluctant to come off they're just about to substitute Just about to take this free kick and uh, the indications from the touchline were for a substitution. I think he's got to have his last strike. And if it doesn't pay off, he comes off. Maybe a little deal he's struck with a bench. Well, it's taking a lot of time to settle this one out. Oh, I think there's, there's a bit of nonsense going on amongst both sets of players <laughs> you can hear his voice from up there he's like a father with naughty children now
and heaven knows who, who got that booking done he flourished it in the face of three players and if they don't watch I think somebody's going to get seriously into trouble here here it comes Betty Tuster with a shot and it breaks clear much ado about nothing Mark Hugh, uh, Rodriguez got in the way of that a little bit unfortunate I do believe though that we're getting the substitution now disappointed Batis Tuta comes off and on comes as I said Acosta about 18 minutes gone of the second half Argentina still training And at the moment heading for their first defeat since they played in that very disappointing and rather squalid final in Italy against uh, the then West Germany. And Lucinho just verified that Lucinho in the defensive wall got that uh, booking. And at this stage in the competition, these teams have got to be very, very careful now. They, they cannot miss out on key players as they already are in Antonio Carlos in the semi-final. Well, the more I see of the, 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 the present teams, that was a neat little break there by uh, Edmundo. He's a tricky little player. The more I see of the teams, the more I begin to agree with the Italian coaches and tilt towards Colombia. Run forward here by Rodriguez. Medina. And look at the number of shirts getting forward now for Argentina. At Zapata. We're seeing the defensive side of Brazil now. And of course that's the side they've got to show. It's not just a case of the pyrotechnics near the penalty area. They've got to be able to defend as well. Rodriguez. No! Right underneath that Simone. High up and under that one, but uh, nevertheless they've got to chance it now. Time running out. I make it uh, 20 minutes have gone in the second half. And one of the disappointing aspects is a lack of link-up they've had with the Batistuta. He was looking a bit doleful coming off, and I don't blame him. Ooh. Goy Kachia doesn't like that at all. I think both the Mexican and uh, Colombian goalkeepers would have liked that up. Rodriguez trying to make the difference, attacking on the left. And we're seeing more of Argentina, there's little doubt about that. Back there by Valbert. Well, oh, that's a bad one. Now, can he get the shot in? He does indeed, but a very poor one. Basualdo. Well, he had a good look at the goal. In fact, it was Gorosito. But a dreadful shot. Almost a lack of conviction about it. I think they're even whistling on the bench. Little rueful philosophizing going on on the bench down there by the Argentinians. Really are missing Redondo in midfield. Very arrogant player, struts about, but to great effect. That'll be a free kick. This Brazil have to watch.
And that's one thing that you could not fault Argentina and Uruguay for. They are professionally committed in the game. They concentrate a great deal. The structure remains the same. And every now and again in the past, Brazilian teams, most notably in Italy against it, uh, uh, in Spain against Italy, became rather casual and arrogant, thought they had a game won, and ended up uh, looking very embarrassed indeed. They've got to watch that now. They don't lapse into what sometimes is a Brazilian trait. To the far post, and Ruggeri wasn't all that far away from that. Simone at the back, but Ruggeri had come forward. And we're actually halfway through the second half now. And Brazil not breaking down yet. Although, quite clearly, they have decided to lie back somewhat significantly from their first half performance. Ruggeri not getting all that cleanly and you get the impression the crowd in the background taking something of an academic interest in this good running while well, Acosta has come in to, to, to introduce a bit of drive and needle as you saw it there trying to take the player on there's a bit of snarl about his play which may be effective to break up the rhythm that the Brazilians have got into anyway corner kick oh it's hitting well and it's in the net it's equalizer wonderful header there by Rodriguez well I did warn the Brazilians very much like Uruguay this very professional team can suddenly bring a goal out of the blue and indeed well forward it went and the great header The goalkeeper right up to that, stretched out to his six feet two frame. No chance of getting it. And now we're back in an electrifying game again, just when it seemed there might have been a little bit of shoulder in that as well, of Valbert. But I think the main impetus came from Rodriguez. So 23 minutes of the second half gone. And that equaliser by the substitute. Absolutely delighted. And any jubiety about the lack of conviction was, I think, uh, purged by the side of Rodriguez running away in delight towards the bench. One each now. Oh dear, we've seen Brazilian teams in the lead before. Uh, I think from the time of the demise of Pele, some of the Brazilian teams have looked extremely promising up to a certain crucial uh, phase of uh, one of the, the tournaments, like two years ago in the Copa America, like the last World Cup. And then just suddenly failing I picked out the most notable example, Italy uh, really beat them when they should have been trounced by a superior Argent uh, Brazilian side and now two more substitutions, Paulinha coming off, he's hardly touched the ball in this game, 18 and 20 coming on, we're getting Marquinhos and Almiron. into the box and up comes the goalkeeper Zetti let me remind you this game could uh, clearly go to penalties as it did the uruguay Colombia match
and after that magnificent game that Polina had against Chile scoring superb goals as I said Zika would have been proud of he said a, a dejected and very jaded afternoon of it that's why he's been taken off oh you've got to hand it to the Argentinians they never give up always technically very sound Simone oh they're doing the running now whipped across there by Medina but I think there might have been a flag for offside 27 minutes gone as I said Almir is on Edmundo had a very very good uh, first half in particular there's the goal again it did come off the head of Rodriguez but I do believe there might have been a slightest deflection off a shoulder and I'm sure you'll stay with us for what ought to be a very interesting last 15 minutes Zap. that is Lucinho and all the pace and the drive and the versatility a play that we saw from Brazil is rather drained from them now. What an impact Rodriguez has made in this. Then he's coming forward again. Touched in now to Simone. Simone, can he lay it off? He tries a shot himself. Simone, of course, from Seville. Played his original football in the club that won the present championship at Argentina, Vela Sarsfield, before leaving for Pisa. Simone had a couple of goals in the last Copa. Over comes Rosinho. Muller. Again having to come a bit deep to get a ball. Well that's onside, no! who would look very very close indeed that's a free kick I just get the suggestion this uh, Brazilian defense is now getting slightly ragged and I wonder if Antonio Carlos is feeling uh, if not slightly miffed at least highly dejected by the fact that he knows even if they go through he can't play in the semi-final annoyed about his bookings and look at that stupid performance by Boigiero there kicking the ball away I mean this referee has already shown he's not messing about 15 minutes to go penalty kicks looming Dorosito shaping to take this Zapata just beside the ball Simone halfway to the defensive lineup Zapata was on the lineup there was a little deflection a much better performance by Argentina in the second half though playing just in front of the defense Zapata I don't think there will be any Viva Zapata tonight because I'm beginning to feel Argentina are getting a significant grip of this game of course if it goes to penalties it's uh, a bit of a lottery nice play by the sub flicked on but I think offside on this side uh, Antonio Carlos was trying to creep forward Simone picks up we're seeing more of um, Gorosito in, in midfield there he is on to Simone Basualdo Fabian Basualdo
Letting the Brazilians chase after them. Getting the opening and doing it well. Look at the run Simone made. He was in midfield two passes ago and then made that great run towards the box. Now where's the pace? Tremendous pace indeed, but look at the very good covering in that defence. He had beaten Borrelli, but in then came Altamirano. That's good organisation. And there's that rolling over and over that I mentioned in relation to Simone's goal, which he refrained from doing earlier on, and a booking by Cafu. That's very unfortunate for Cafu because he really is such a, a fine player and Cafu already having been booked trouble piles on trouble that's his second booking and if the rules of the competition are adhered to out he will go of any sem semi-final Rodriguez changing or charging into the penalty area and I say it changing to good effect maybe because he has effectively transformed this game now Muller can we see a bit of his greatness again in the box well he's outside it still free and I think uh, the play referee rightly waving play on and that was a rather puerile effort by Marquinhos on the far side the game decidedly on the balance but I think tilting towards Argentina 12 minutes remaining now I think if we were playing to a full stadium 90,000 the buzz and the oohs and the ahs would make this game look different but I have to say it's always been an absorbing one and the way Argentina have come back restructured themselves slightly now then, as Simone came forward again, you'll notice the change that's taken place. They are now able, apparently, to get men into the box like that. When you think back of uh, Batistuta, he hardly got a pass either on the ground or in the air. And I think certainly one goal would do it at this stage. Muller. Oh, too obviously looking for the one-two that time. That's the man I'm talking about. Rodriguez. Leo Rodriguez from Atlanta, 26. And the ball beautifully taken away. Now, how can he counter-attack? This is Lucinho. Trying to get players into the box. Kappa goes on the outside. And now, they're never going to beat Goikachia with that diagonal shot with the way he lines himself up for that Goikachia you'll remember if this does go to penalties save vital ones against Yugoslavia Simone goes through with a penalty oh now that was very close indeed I think in fact it was Almir who came in Almir brought down I think I've seen referees give penalty kicks for less than that to be honest I'd like to see that one again and normally we do in fact I think the replay machine uh, here in Ecuador uh, is almost bunned out by now but a number of replays they play Well, a broad smile on the face of Fabian Basualdo. You can hardly believe that that was given. Back comes Leo Rodriguez to defend. And now the referee is warning the bench, somebody on the bench, to get back in there again. Looked like a traffic ward in there, didn't it? Zinho will take this it's the far post well now they all disappeared
You might have thought that event would have ended with enthusiasm. I wonder if they feel they could take it on penalties. So much of a lottery. I did mention the, the clash of styles. While well, you take you pay your money, you take your choice. For Argentina out of it in the first half with Brazil playing some lovely football. Then coming back into it in the second half. Very good sound technical play. Excellent football as all round. Now, here is this incident I was talking about. Almir going forward. Well, well, well. And once again, please. I would have given a penalty kick for that. May well be the referee decided he didn't have a very good look at it, giving the defender the benefit of the doubt, which normally happens. I now make it seven minutes left, still one each. One little touch could turn this game. Might this be it as it's picked up by Medina this time. Medina. Oh, he lacked support. He had nobody up with him. I think both teams running out of steam. Boydiero rather disappeared in the second half. Did a lot of good work in the first. There he is. Looking slightly tired, doesn't he? glad to get rid of the ball Valbert now what an impact this man has made Rodriguez flowing forward tries to wave it in front of Simone and look at several of the players gasping for breath Medina himself with the run and that's curled in That was Nestor Gorosito. Well, watching it again and thinking back to the performances by the Ecuadorian side, it's quite clear that we're going to see an interesting clash of styles again if um, either uh, if Argentina get through to the final. But if it's an open game, as I think it might be against uh, the likes of, say, Brazil or Colombia. I think Ecuador are really going to be put to the test. They've so far played rather puerile teams and that's way beyond. And have attacked with flair, but how will they cope with flair? With players like, uh, for example, Espria, Valencia, Rincon who will be back. Or Polina at his best, Muller, Losinho. That's the question. I think they would probably prefer Argentina. So Brazil, very near the end. Trying to wriggle his way forward. They'd worked that line very well, the Argentina defense. They we're going to be playing Muller and Almir and uh, uh, across the offside. Well, that number 18 who was coming was actually Acosta. Acosta who was uh, brought down, not Almir, Acosta. But they didn't get the penalty kick. Oh, now the jersey being pulled. Away goes Gafu again. Oh, it's a lovely run forward. Oh, just a bit too much. Miller! They could have won the game there. Lovely little flick across towards Muller. And he had come in too far, too soon. And they may bitterly regret that as we head towards the lottery of penalty kicks. Dramatic though it may be, you cannot predict it. 
The one thing about football is you, you like to hazard a guess at things and forecast. But in penalty kick taking, it doesn't work. Let me repeat that. 18 again was a cross that you saw him being brought down there uh, for our Argentina. Way to the corner. I think they might get a free kick out of it, yes. That was well worked. Now, I don't think Cafu should uh, argue with the referee here. I now make it two and a half minutes left. It's one each. And I'm quite sure Ruggeri will come up. So will the others. Watch the head of Rodriguez. In it comes. Oh, it's a poor one. Tired one. And penalty kicks loom. Dribbled out by Zetti. No, he's not all that uh, keen on coming out of his penalty area. Antonio Carlos. Antonio Carlos, only 26. And Luke's a um, beautifully balanced player. That is our near. Now. Cafu. Marquinhos. Nice forward to Mullen. Well, it's onside. No. Oh, no. It was uh, Almir got through. Muller just lying at the back. He was going to bust forward into the penalty area. Just restrained himself. I think he realized it was going to be offside. Rodriguez, I make it. We're now into our last minute. And they're playing for penalties. That is obvious. Now, some people prefer no extra time and just penalties because they say players want to get to the finish and get a win. At this stage, at this very late stage in the game, it doesn't look like it. Maybe uh, midway through the second half. I think you realize they've got at least a second chance with penalties. 30 seconds remaining. What can he lay it off? He can indeed. Oh, whipped away by Antonio Carlos. Danger still there. Rodriguez chased into the box. And now the crowd trying to lift Brazil for a final effort. A late spurt. Easily headed away. It was meant for Muller on the left. And now we're in stoppage time. All eyes now on the referee. Whistle will go any second. It does now. We now go once again for the second successive quarterfinal to a penalty kick shootout. One each. And I suppose after 90 minutes, that might go officially in as a draw. But we now look forward to a penalty to side of the two goals. The first one, a brilliant one in the first half in the 38th minute by Muller. And then in the 23rd minute of the second half, the substitute Rodriguez with a header for one all. So now they've got to take a breather, stay to the nerves, and then face up to this traumatic experience. The referee having a word with uh, Muller. I think Ruler will certainly take one. Looks to me like Zinho. Like indicating who's going to be involved here. Roy Kachia pacing up and down there. Perhaps ruminating on what he did the last time to save a penalties at a very important juncture in his career. The crowd have enjoyed this game, I think. Largely because 
it was always in the balance. Brazil went ahead deservedly, but never clearly. Ruggeri will take up his responsibility as captain, I think. Another deciding uh, who's going to take them first. <laughs> An actual fact that enjoying this little chin wag. There have been a lot of friendly cup competitions in South American football. They've been rather dying out, largely because of the export of players and the lack of quality for so many games of football. Well, it looks to me as if uh, Mura, Zinho, Luzinho, Kafu and Roberto Carlos will take the penalty kicks. We shall see, that's the way I think they were grouping there. And indeed there's one. That's uh, Zinho coming forward. I wonder if he has read any books about how to remain calm. Sports psychology is nothing that anybody laughs at any longer. The stress and the strain that players have to put up with under ordinary circumstances is great and now accentuated by do-or-die finishes like this. Zinho against Goikachia, the man who saved vital penalties in the World Cup. Argentina remains so far unbeaten. 1-0 for Brazil and you can hear which side the stadium favours. Scored there by Zinho. Certainly did that confidently. And look at how they, they mislead the goalkeeper, incline the body one way and stab at it the other. That's added to the present scoreline, of course. Argentina's penalty, a simple one. That is one each. Nicely driven in Medina. No, and in fact, it uh, was Gorosita. Gorosita. One each in penalties, two all in aggregate. Here is Cafu. Now, I did say about him, his finishing from the wing isn't all that great. Now, it's a penalty. Ooh, he just got that away. Now then, I wonder how close Goikachia got to that. Not all that far off it. Well, Cafu remaining rather sanguine as if he's saying to the crowd, well, that's what I meant all the time. Watch him walking away. Just bowed his head. Anyway, that's 2-1 or 3-2 as the case may be. Oh, done very easily by Simone. And Simone, I think, gesturing to the crowd as if he doesn't care two hoots which side they're on. That was Simone. So equal at this stage. And the goalkeepers, despite that marvellous leap by Goikachia, the goalkeepers at the moment floundering. Now Muller. Well, he made it look ridiculously simple. The goalkeeper, Goy Kichia, seems to have an instinct for going the right direction. Watch it again. But the sheer force of the shot. Now, that was deceptively strong. He didn't look as if he had struck it all that hard when he ran up. But by Jove, he did. 
So Brazil one ahead again. Now the man who saved them, Rodriguez. Listen to the the rise of the whistles in the background. Rodriguez remaining admirably cool. Look at that again. A gesture of defiance to the rather partisan crowd. So we're back even again. Rodriguez with a goal. And that silenced the crowd. There's only one way to do that, and that's to put the ball in the back of the net. Now this is going to be, as I suspected, Roberto Carlos. Running up like Roberto Rivellini. In fact, and oh, Rivellino used to put them at the back of the net like that. So reminiscent of him. Whoa. I remember Rivellino, any goalkeeper facing Rivellino, and if you hit the goalkeeper with a ball, it was curtains. Brazil won ahead again. Another survival penalty for Argentina. Listen to the crowd, they're against them. I think it makes them grittier. Yes, it does indeed. Goal scored there and well put in by Acosta. Rattling it off. The upright of the back. Now Brazil have got to put this one away, that's for sure. Ooh, we just got it in again, Goikichia. What a man for judging the right angle. That was Lucinho, by the way. On we go to another penalty kick. Can I say to any youngster watching this program, or indeed to anybody, we've been seeing some marvellous penalty kicks. They've been taken under pressure. Well, virtually all penalty kicks are, but this particular pressure and on and on it goes with players striking with composures, goalkeepers, particularly Goikachia, almost getting touches. And now Argentina against the crowd and the ferocity of that by Medina. Showed his contempt. Really banging them in now. So, even again. It's remarkable how this is going on and on. We might end up in floodlight yet. The sixth penalty. Oh, that's the save! He's done it again! Goy Kichia! And the almost impressive features there of Basile. The man who did it in the World Cup has done it again. I think he deserves that. He's been so near three of the penalty kicks, he's guessed the right direction and now and now this is it, sudden death you could see Batistuta on the sideline, substituted not at all happily can hardly watch this this could put Argentina into the semi-final to play Colombia it all hinges on this perhaps and he's done it! Follow the goal to Morelli. Oh, a superb ending. And who said the Argentinians weren't caring about this competition? As Borelli 
puts him into the semi-final to play Colombia the goalkeeper couldn't learn any lessons from Goy Cochia who yet again turns out to be the star for Argentina no wonder they're interviewing a sad goalkeeper then it all mattered about goalkeeping you fell by the law of averages if by nothing else Goy Kichia was going to stop one of them and indeed he did and so Argentina after having been played off the park in the first half show their great professionalism they'll never be look at this a happy ending there in the semi-final